Yeah, so hi again. Uh, hi again. So we're glad to welcome you on our first day of quality management week. My name is Janina Glukova, and I'm competence expert at quality management office at SoftServe, and I will be moderating today's event for you. So the topic today is your software tester, what's next? And the person who will be presenting this one for you um, is the person we, we started working together almost 11 years ago at one of our first projects. And it's my pleasure today to, uh, to work together with her in uh, QMO. So please welcome Jana Kanibalotska, uh, who is competence manager at QMO. But before we jump into the presentation, uh, we have several rules to follow and i would like to announce them for you so first of all for all employees in ukraine please take care and go down to the shelters uh, during the air raid sirens please stay muted in case of any background noise um, write, write down your full name using zoom functionality so for us to see your names also and if it's possible please turn on your camera be active, ask questions. And by the way, we will have uh, time for Q&A at the end of our session today. But nevertheless, you are free to put your comments into the chat. And the last one, so in case you have any issues with internet connection, a link to recording of event you will get in follow-up email after the session. So that's all for the organizational part of uh, our today's session. And Jana, please, the stage is yours. Thank you, Jana. Hello, everyone. I'm going to share my screen first. And let me let me know when you see it. Yeah, we see. Okay, okay. great. So hello, everyone. And my name is Jana. And uh, Jana already told about me a lot. So no need to give more information. Also, you can see it on the slide. And um, I have put everything that essential and that I have a CQB certification uh, because it's not possible to not to tell it to everyone if uh, once you get it, right? So this is necessary, you know, or you, you should know it. So about 12 years ago, I was at this point in my life where I didn't know who I want to be when I grow up. I got low degree, but uh, the most important thing I've learned actually is that I don't want to be a lawyer. So I've become a software testing. Sounds pretty random, right? But uh, I'm just keeping the, this long part how it happened because it's not, the, like, not connected to our today's uh, talk. But uh, it all might be the end of the story, but it was just the beginning of it. Uh, during these 12 years, I got back to the point of who do I want to be when I grow up numerous times, really. Am I going to grow uh, in my technical skills or should I work on my soft skills? Maybe I should switch to business analysis or project management, but I'm a software tester and I like to be a software tester. I would like to stay in this direction. And can I st stay here in this direction and still grow professionally? It appears then, yes, I can, and I don't feel like I reached the limit. So I have found this answer to this question, what's next for me? And now I guess it's my turn to help you to answer this question for you. Let me check, yeah. Uh, for this purpose, today we are going to cover the next topics. Who software testers are? This is important to be aligned on vocabulary. Then professional growth, what is it? And what pass or options do we have actually? Tips on how to grow into the right direction. What you can do uh, what to, to, to follow one or another pass. And what we are not going to cover is tricks or um, how to become a software tester. What exactly to read? to become a software tester or even to grow professionally what exact skills you need to have uh, to change your career direction or even get a rise so it's not also not in the, our today's agenda but what i want to take uh, want you to take out from the session is uh, an understanding of the possibilities you really have and maybe ideas on how you can approach the planning of your career 
So let's start with the definition. Software tester is the easiest way to enter IT. You know that, right? So you you need know um, to know almost anything, uh, right? To become a software testing, you just can get some basic theory and then um, know maybe how to use computer, and that's gonna be enough. And then when you like, become more mature, then you can become a normal IT specialist, uh, uh, like software development, for for example, right? And now, uh, part plus plus in the comment or whatever you want, uh, if you heard something like this at least once during your career. Uh, or it's only me who sees constantly these advertisements for all of this, uh, uh, for all these courses that are popping up like mushrooms after the rain and promise you to make your software tester in three weeks. Because I don't know how it sounds for you, but to me, it sounds like a bullshit, sorry. So who is, uh, oh yeah, I, I, I see a lot of pluses. Yeah, yeah, I feel your pain. We are the same bot. Thank you. <laughs> Who are the software test and, uh, tester? Let's figure it out. And for this, uh, maybe let's try to, I, I want to give, I want to have your help here a bit. So could you please, uh, Jana, maybe to put the link or Nadia? Yeah, thank you. So please follow this link and let's try to generate with you who are software testers. Um, no need to give a big um, like definition or something, just put some couple of words what uh, software testers do, what is the, their main uh, responsibilities. Uh, so like, and we will try to see what what do we have? Okay. Good eye. Mm, probably uh, like just to have a good eye, it's not, not enough, but it's a good start. Hate bugs. Mm, actually, one sometimes they love bugs, right? Why why to hate it? So you, you should love your bug. You should uh, like explore it and everything. Okay. Okay, last bastion of quality. Mm, nice, nice. I like, I like it. Maybe we should change our names of our competences to last bastion's quality. I like it. We, we should discuss it. Curious, right. Assure quality, break software. Mm? No, it's developer who breaks it. Talks a lot. Sometimes, like now. Check quality. Okay, I like it responsible for quality um yes along with other teammates test verification where is validation yes validation <laughs> i i knew that validation should go through this verification right assure quality no okay it's another discussion <laughs> if tester could assure uh, assure quality find bugs okay thank you very much i i see a lot of ideas and uh yeah a lot of them are around bugs uh that's not what ex not only what we do right um, but i see the check quality cares about product yes it is really something that we do uh responsible for quality partially yes but actually the whole team usually is responsible for quality Detail oriented, curious, right? Uh, assure quality, mm, not directly, but indirectly, maybe make a product better. Definitely, I hope. Yeah, I also believe in it. Likes, ask question. Yeah, it's a really good quality for the tester. Okay, thank you very much for the for these ideas. I will uh, I will make a screenshot then and put it in the final presentation because it's really nice. But let's see who we call software tester in software. So what the, do the people do? Uh, in software, we have three separated, uh, separate competencies, and all of them we, we can call software testers. So uh, they are quality control engineer who define the strategy, plan testing, execute tests, uh, write as documentation, analyze requirements definitely, track defects, and uh, work with quality risks, collect metrics, et cetera, et cetera. We have test automation engineers whose main focus is on automation. 
they uh, can design test automation frameworks, write and execute automated tests. Uh, then they uh, create text, test execution reports, integrate uh, test automation into continuous integration, also track defects, collect metrics, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Software engineers and tests they work with product architecture. Uh, also do test automation, and actually they also can do test manually. Uh, do some uh, specific things like uh, performance testing, security testing. They can also set up infrastructure and uh, do normally technically challenging tasks. That, that's why we have them, right? So when I say software tester and uh, during this presentation, I mean all of them. So. Uh, don't be confused with names well, whatever name you uh, you have uh, in your company if you not work at software maybe qa engineer or i don't know tester or quality assurance or quality analyst etc cetera, etc cetera. we are all software testers so today we it's all about us and now when we are aligned on terms uh, and their medium uh, let's move to professional growth finally yes enough of this boring, uh, boring terms. So professional growth. Professional growth, um, I came up with such a name, uh, not, not only by myself, definitely I Googled it, as we usually do. Uh, so professional growth is a gaining new skills and work experience that can help you reach a goal in your career. So a goal. Goal here is the main word, actually. Do you know why? Uh, because uh, if you want to find something, you have to know what you're looking for, right? You should know where you want to go and only then plan the steps you need to take to reach this goal, to reach the, your destination. What else I want to touch uh, here is two types of growth. I'll talk, um, I'll talk today about vertical and horizontal growth. What is the difference? Vertical growth is normally just ascending a traditional corporate ladder, right? You, when you are growing from junior to leader and etc., you can have numerous names like principal tester or what, whatever. So it's the vert vertical growth. But horizontal growth, whereas it's uh, um, it's a, a, it's um, any growth and a, a taking any professional path that take you into new career direction or giving you uh, some additional skills uh, even inside uh, kind of connected to your directions um, fields like uh, it can be um, gaining new skills in uh, connected for qc engineer for example it's uh, taking some um, knowledge and skills in test automation for example it will be horizontal or in business analysis but uh, here is the thing Horizontal and vertical growth are not mutually exclusive. So they can and they really good, uh, good complement each other. They do it extremely well. You can think of horizontal growth as developing a root system, uh, like a tree. So uh, when you grow horizontally, you develop a root system in order to, uh, for your tree, so your career, to go, grow taller. And um, Actually, to grow horizontally doesn't mean to change your career direction. You can stay in your career direction, but have additional skills, knowledge, play different roles, and uh, you keep expanding usually your knowledge with different capabilities of moving horizontally while climbing this ladder, corporate ladder, right? But uh, there is no such thing as one size fit at all career path. But I've collected some pieces of advice that work for, from my experience. Uh, but before I show you my ideas, as usually, let's, uh, let's compare them with your ideas. And to get your ideas, please follow another link to Mentimeter. And... Um, Help me, please, with your ideas how we can uh, grow professionally. So some short ideas of, from your experience, if you have any, and I believe you have any, because I'm not uh, telling here how to become software tester. So let's see what you can recommend, some short, maybe one sentence uh, idea on how you can grow professionally. 
So I don't know, like read books or watch videos or go to conferences. Sleep hard, okay, I like this one, my favorite one. Always learn something new, yes, it's really hard to learn something old. No, I, I can do it. Over time, oh, no, why would you do that? <laughs> Don't over time, for free. Learn programming language, good advice. I agree that it might help you. It's because horizontal grows. Certification, yeah, I agree. I agree, it really can help and I will touch it later. Yes, T challenging tasks, I agree. Go out of your comfort zone. Is it someone who's uh, seen my presentation? No? Courses, YouTube, practice, Udemy courses, right? Proactive, I agree. Soft management skills. Learn to automate, okay. Practice, labor market analysis, right? Everyday practice, collaboration, learn from others. Why would I need this presentation even? You know everything. So then we can stop here. <laughs> you have all the ideas already. Okay. Yes, past educational courses with relevant material and use your knowledge right away in project. It's really important to uh, to use your knowledge, right? To because you need you need to turn them into skills. They are not useless, but uh, it's really better when you have practice along with this theory. Train your soft skill, teach others, observe and learn. Wow, super nice advice. Thank you very much. I, I will make a, mm, it's really hard to make a screenshot of this one, but okay, I will manage to make a, several screenshots and we will uh, have this in the final presentation. Okay, now let's compare your suggestions with mine. Uh, I want to move to general growth tips. And uh, the best, uh, the first one is, uh, I will repeat myself, about a career goal. So set your career goal. It might be one big goal then bro that uh, broken into small steps. It might be short-term goals along with long-term ones. Whatever works for you, guys. Whatever, whatever works for you better. For me, uh, like short-term goals works better, but sometimes you need to have a like long-term goal. Uh, because your short-term goals should contribute to it. And uh, please do not put too much pressure on you when you uh, set in your goal, especially short-term ones, because uh, it uh, can be changed. It's totally okay to change your goal. Uh, if you feel that, if you feel that you need that, then, then just do it. Then uh, explore uh, requirements. Uh, it's about requirements to position you want to have or the level you want to have uh, or the job you want to have if, you, if it's requirements of some desired company. So for this purpose, you can uh, browse your job description in your company, job standards, uh, competency matrices, whatever you have. You can have vac vacancy descriptions if it's something um, outside of your company. So you, you should need what you need to know, what, what skills you need to have in order to grow, right? Then uh, evaluate your current level. Uh, you need to know uh, how far are you from this, uh, from your goal, right? So you need to understand as objectively as you can, uh, where are you? Ask your mentor maybe, or do like pass some tests, uh, take some certification or something just to understand where are you actually, or go to some interview, I don't know if it helps you. Then find suitable for you exactly learning solution. It's okay to not read a lot of professional books. I don't, I don't read them my, myself, so I, I hate just sit and reading professional book, but um, for me, some blog articles works better and some videos works better because I, um, I, can, uh, I can get more information from audio maybe and from video than reading. So for me, it works better, but uh, if reading a book works better for you, then definitely you can read a book. So uh, the main point that you uh, need to find what works for you. 
And uh, the last one is find possibilities to apply your knowledge. Yeah, so how we mentioned the practice, practice and practice again. So yeah, get some knowledge and practice them. So def definitely it's uh, we, uh, you mentioned all these advisors, so you know it all, but together we uh, like collected this list. Uh, so, so maybe not uh, all of these tips will work for you. Uh, maybe some of them will work better, some of them will work worse. They are not, might not be universal, but more or less. And I, ha I hope at least one of them will fit you and uh, just try to pick yours. Just try to pick what uh, works for you. Now it's time to talk more about vertical and horizontal growth, I guess, and their specifics. Uh, that's what vertical professional growth for software testers looks like in our company. Uh, well, all software testers, uh, uh, whatever it's quality control engineer or test automation engineer or software engineer or test, they go through, uh, from trainee through junior, middle, senior, lead to expert. So pretty straightforward, right? But what's under the hood? How does climbing this ladder happens? Maybe in your company, you have something similar if you are not from software, but if you are from software, you should, you should probably know it. Uh, everything that relates to pre professional development in software is a part of people excellence ecosystem. I've vis visualized here part of the associate journey, and uh, I will try briefly explain what is happening here because it's the, like may, can be topic of uh, huge separate discussion. So I'll try to be brief here. Uh, at the center of all of this system for us is performance review. Performance review is a regular event. Uh, all associates in software have it. No, almost all, but from software testers, they all have it. There is a timeline according to which performance reviews happen. During performance review, usually associate uh, sits with an expert who is certified to do it. Uh, usually it's more mature uh, associate, like the, the same as, um, as, the, as this one, but maybe with a higher level. So for example, uh, lead QC engineer could uh, do this performance review for senior QC engineer. And during this event, they sit together and uh, the person who is going through this performance review, they show what they did for uh, last six months. Here is so in the timeline, we can see that after hiring, usually in four months, we have the first performance review and then they are happening every six months or every 12, 12 months for associates from starting from lead level. So they sit together and associates just show what they do, how they approach it, or what they cover it, what they not cover it, what they uh, try to do, maybe what they do by themselves, and et cetera, et cetera. And they discuss it and uh, show some artifacts uh, to evaluate the quality of the job done. And as an outcome of this event, uh, associate has some uh, uh, recommendation how to grow, how to uh, what can be done better, what can be improved, what can be uh, what was well actually yes, yeah, not only what can be improved, uh, what is, what was good, and uh, all this information goes also to the manager who uh, collects all the feedback from this performance review and from teammates and from themselves and from the client, uh, like all the feedback they can collect and uh, they can decide on the next steps. <clears throat> next steps, uh, this can be just setting some goals or can be promotion. And while manager decide on promotion, uh, they usually take into account uh, pro promotion criteria. We have, for example, the profile coverage because we uh, have <clears throat> numbers that uh, we see at the end of the this event. Uh, this is English level and attitude and behavior criterion is about um, feedback from the team. So how <clears throat> they should associate behave. For example, uh, if uh, associate uh, really bri brilliant technically, but skip all the meeting 
or, uh, or I don't know, being rude to client. So it's not what we expect. And uh, this might be a reason not to <clears throat> promote this person. Uh, <clears throat> also, this might be some additional project requirements, for example, uh, to know, to get, uh, to get to know some tool uh, to, that helps project to advance or something like this. So let's have a, a closer look <clears throat> on what is the basis of all this performance review. Because to do a performance review, we have a, a job standard against what this person is being usually evaluated. Um, here we have example. And uh, the structure, like, or, or, or really high level structure of a job standard. So, job standard contains some competencies. Inside the competencies, we have jobs. And inside jobs, we have knowledge areas. So, what associate needs to know and learning materials. Uh, it's, uh, learning materials stands for what associate can do or read uh, to get this knowledge. For example, quality control job standard. We have test design competency there. And inside the test design competency, we have job prepared test cases using test design techniques. Uh, for example, knowledge areas for this job might be black box uh, test design techniques, test case specification types, test case structure, etc. It's not the, the whole list. It's not even the whole name of the job, but uh, I, make, I made it shorter. And the learning materials. Uh, learning materials, we added here test design implementation best practices from our conference that we collected from the experience of our people in software for, from software testers. And uh, ISTQB foundation level syllabus. Uh, you might notice that uh, learning recommendations we have here as the certification, but it doesn't mean that associates have to pass the certification. It's not required, but knowledge you are getting, preparing yourself to the certification, they are really useful. So I would recommend at least going through preparation for the certain, uh, for the uh, certain certification that is relevant to your profile, right? Because uh, at least you can at least read these materials. You can at least try what is recommended. No need to pass the certification if you don't want. If it makes you super anxious. You know, it had happened sometime, but uh, to know material that is inside the preparation, it's really important. It will really advance your career, believe me. And um, I think this is it about job standard. Or if you will have a question, we'll discuss them after the, the presentation. I hope we will have time. And uh, we already generated with you a pretty big list of uh, growth tips but um, I've shared some and I've shared only five of them, but don't you think I have only <clears throat> five tips, right? It can be true. So <clears throat> I have some tips uh, more specific to vertical growth, but it doesn't mean that they won't be uh, super irrelevant to everything else, but uh, in my head, they are more specific to ver uh, vertical growth probably. First of all, see above and beyond. And you suggested something like this. So do not stop on your direct responsibilities. Always think what else you can do for your project. Uh, don't, uh, even if um, your client or your manager uh, doesn't want to see something because they just, they might not know that it exists actually some practices, but you <clears throat> can think what to, uh, you can do to make your project uh, better and it will be recognized believe me keep yourself updated again you already mentioned it so read some articles uh, see some so listen to some podcasts <clears throat> don't limit yourself to your project requirements so even uh, if a pro project doesn't require you to know i don't know databases or how to test api or how to uh, test using api it doesn't mean that you shouldn't know that it, uh, that it exists and how to use it maybe without uh, broad practice it will be hard to you for you to to, uh, to have the skill but anyway, it will be really useful for you to keep yourself updated of, of these good practices that exist in the world. 
seek, seek regular feedback. Uh, in Sorcerer, we have the system, we have people excellence. So every at least every half a year, you are able to get feedback. But if you don't have it in your company, for example, uh, it's really good idea to uh, just ask your manager and uh, or your mentor, you, if you have some, ask your lead to give you feedback to, so you can, um, can understand what you do right and what can be improved. Uh, evaluate your current level. I, uh, I added it again, the really connected point to what uh, I have before. Uh, because here I made, um, uh, here I, I specify to evaluate your current level as objectively as possible. For example, you can ask a person that is more mature. You can um, have a mentor or, I don't know, make a connection with someone who is more mature and ask to evaluate you, for example, if you don't have this uh, well-established processes in your company. Be visible. It's important, and uh, as my um, XX manager Marta Fille always said, so we need to be visible. Everyone needs to see what, uh, how brilliant we are and what great uh, we do, because we uh, usually do a lot of great things. And uh, uh, it's maybe in our culture, I, I don't know how it's, uh, it's not maybe true for all the countries, but for Ukraine, I think it's in our culture to be more humble, you know, to not talk about your achievements, how great you are, but actually it really helps when it goes about vertical growth. So think about it. And if it's hard to you, maybe to practice it, to not to brag about yourself, but not to be that humble and try to help people to understand how brilliant you are. And the most important here is take your time. At your time, you see, I like emphasized it. Uh, so everyone go grows at their own pace, and uh, you shouldn't look at people who grow faster or slower. Just take your time. Whatever you need, uh, you can use it because you have. Uh, no, we don't have all the time in the universe, but it's better to take your time. It doesn't mean procrastinate. Also. So, but um, don't put too much pressure on you. So <clears throat> I think we cleared vertical growth, but what about horizontal one? I spent some time on drawing all this <clears throat> scheme, all this tree. <clears throat> I hope it will be useful for you maybe, but uh, it's kind of visualize uh, some maybe obvious things, but still, it can be useful, I agree, I guess. And actually, horizontal grow uh, become more popular now because I googled it so like to uh, find some fancy definitions or something, and I had uh, found numerous uh, articles about horizontal growth and how it and how it's great to have it in your company and how it's. Uh, helpful for your people to grow and everything and everything. But let's figure it out. In, in contrast to vertical paths, uh, which involves just moving between hierarchical dispositions in the same in the same profession, horizontal career growth involves uh, shuffling actually between uh, these jobs uh, with a similar, usually with a similar responsibilities but in distinct areas of expertise. So for example, you are a quality control engineer, but also play the role of business analyst in the team. The like, common situation, right? I, I experience it a lot. Or even uh, you, you change your career direction to business analysis. We are not here to judge you, traitor. But, uh, it's all will be a horizontal growth. Uh, using the terminology we used to in software, uh, like when I talk about software testers, I want to remind you that I'm uh, talking about quality control, test automations, and software engineers and tests. And uh, all of them actually on high level share the same path and have the same possibilities to grow. Except, uh, except how you can see this hard skill part 
it goes to, at some point to specialization and this specialization might be test automation so test automation engineer already have the specialization good for them <clears throat> but uh, if they want they anytime can start moving more more into soft skills for example so i didn't actually i don't know re i remember even one test automation engineer who moved to business analysis uh, and even more who moved to team leadership and test management and project management but yeah even one with uh, the business analysis plus so how to read it it's i believe it's pretty straightforward but um, uh, you can if you want to work on your hard skill more if it's more interesting or uh, like i don't know if it's more fun for you to develop your hard skills you can get some skills from software engineering it doesn't mean that you need to move to a software developer but you can get skills learn programming language how someone suggested it's a really nice advice even you if you are a quality control engineer and you do not automate anything it doesn't mean you shouldn't uh, be able to read the code because uh, to read the code is really um helps you it makes you a true engineer you know not just a junior who uh, know how to use the software who learned how to use it and who uh, looks at the software at the software as a user so if you know how to read the code, it really helps you to be a real uh, hardcore engineer, let's say. Uh, also, you can go uh, or not go, but you can add some specialization to you. Uh, you can um, advance your skills in test automation. Uh, you can uh, get some security testing knowledge or performance testing, whatever you want, uh, depending on what is more uh, of your interest. So you can go deeper in any of the specialization and uh, there are not all of them here because there's numerous of specialization you can get and it might be interesting for you uh what about soft skills it's pretty e easy and clear so if you are more into soft skills and it's more interesting for you then you can uh, get some business analysis skills uh, and uh, you can move or uh, stay in the software testing but with these skills for example something like requirements elicitation techniques which are really popular among business analysts but they, it is something that we also like can use. And if you know them, if you uh, use them, it will help you. But not always we have some business analyst or any team or requirements manager, or I don't know, even product owner, or someone who can help us to elicitate uh, requirements from a client, for example. Also, you can uh, move to team leadership as well. Because why not? If it's interesting for you, if you like to, to help people, to lead them, to, uh, to, to help them to grow, it's a right step to take is to go more, move to, more to team leadership. And then you can go to test management. You can be a team leader forever no one like restricted or you, you can go to test management or if you think that enough with this testing you can go to project management uh, whatever corresponds to any of your interests uh, also even if you decide at some point in your life to work on your soft skills it doesn't mean that you cannot step on the this left track to hard skills and advance uh, more and uh, work on them more uh, actually there are career paths that corresponds to any of these interests that you have uh, as well as you can still uh, grow vertically and strengthen the foundation of the tree to grow taller remember this uh, analogy and um, let me visualize it a bit uh, let's go back to this picture but now let's add some small part of horizontal grow options that we have to, more, to make it more complicated, but more aligned with reality, definitely. Software test engineers can move between competencies. So quality control engineer can uh, become test automation engineer, for example, or the software engineer test can become quality control engineer. I never saw it happen, but there is a possibility 
Also, they can have additional profiles, at least uh, in our like, people excellence system, they can have, uh, meaning that a quality control engineer can have additional profile of software engineering test, for example, and grow in both of them. But um, all, actually, they can have not only one, but um, any as many as they want, actually, yeah. Uh, we didn't test the limit, but I believe the, the people excellence team uh, did, and I need to ask if there is a limit to have a, of having additional profiles. And uh, test automation engineers uh, also can have additional profiles inside, inside their direction. For example, you can be Python API uh, test automation engineer, and you can get uh, additional profile or Python web UI test automation engineer, for example. And this is like really a logical step to take to have uh, several profiles because uh, a lot of um, people work in several profiles, not only in one. Uh, Want to have a look on how changing career direction process look like in software? I, I hope you won't because I have something to show you. I wanted to make it uh, sh as short as possible. And this is the example of moving to, into test automation direction because I think it's the most popular, maybe among uh, quality control engineers is the most popular moving to test automation. So how it starts? The first step, the step is to get knowledge and some experience. So how do you can do it? Uh, you probably have, if you are not work for, in software, you probably have something similar in your company. So you start with self-learning or some mentorship or some learning programs. Uh, for example, we have a training program. It's some um, set of learning that you can take and uh, you can get all this knowledge that you need for, to become a test automation engineer. You can uh, execute practical tasks uh, on inside your current project, if it's possible. You can have your pet project. You can uh, be partially involved in the other project to, to get the practice. Because uh, like to have a knowledge, it's OK. It's uh, something that should be done, but before taking practical steps. So practice is also really important. The second step will be to evaluate your level. You will remember that it should be as objectively as you can. So uh, it, this is a small instruction for how we do it at software because we do it uh, through also this people excellence ecosystem. So, but whatever you can, you should evaluate your level and your experience. The third step is to change career direction or to stay in your current profile, but with advanced, uh, but with new skills that you have. Definitely, uh, it's better if you can use them, not just have, but use, because it's, it will help you to keep them. Because um, if you're not, how they say, if you're not use, you lose, something like this. So pretty clear, yes? If not, we will be able to discuss it. And, um, Actually, very soon, as we are moving to the last slides for today, and it's a good timing, I believe. So horizontal growth tips, it's something that I also wanted to share. I have really it's like tiny amount of them because everything uh, pretty much the same as to vertical or general tips, especially if we see uh, horizontal growth as a destination, how to read it. If you want to change your career direction, you will see horizontal growth as a destination. So this is something uh, you are going there. This is some uh, like point you are going to it. Uh, if you see it uh, like this, then any tips that uh, we have uh, for general or vertical growth uh, will also work. Plus, I've added here, here some journey jobs. So it's when you are not like not not uh, not do not have intention to move to some uh, some other direction, but you still want to get some additional skills. Uh, in this case, I would really recommend you to build relationships outside of your area of responsibility. So if you want to be, uh, or if you want to get some project management skills, for example, make a friend uh, um, uh, with uh, some project manager. If you want to, um, uh, to get some DevOps skills, like find the DevOps and uh, make him with your friend. 
maybe with project management is a, a, a bit easier, but still, you still can be friends with DevOps as well. Do not limit yourself with direct responsibilities. Again, uh, because uh, if you want to get some additional skills and you can get them on your current assignment, it's a really perfect case. And uh, if you have, for example, manager who can share their responsibilities with you, it works perfectly. Uh, you can uh, get skills that you want and plus help your project, for example. And stay curious. Yeah, you mentioned several times that curiosity is one of the uh, important parts of uh, software tester's life, right? So for the dessert, I would like to share with you several things that can limit you. Not how to grow, but how not to stop yourself, how not to uh, lose the time of growing. So, or just if go from the opposite works better for you. Uh, put plus into the comment if you uh, heard such like words like my manager wants to make more money on, on me so they should motivate me to grow it's not my responsibility i'm practical but not theoretical i have already two years of experience i know everything about testing i have never i have no path to follow i can only be a manager now or software developer I hate coding, but automation engineers are better paid. I'm junior. In six months, I'll be a senior. I don't have to communicate with clients now, so I don't have to work on my English level, right? Uh, me personally, I uh, hear this uh, a lot. And that's how I get this list of something that can slow you down. Uh, and. Uh, you can see that I don't have only one uh, like quote for only one uh, thing that cannot slow you down. It's one project lifetime loyalty. And what I have to say about this, uh, it's, okay, it's okay if you like your project and you work there for 10 years, for example. Um, it's great that um, your team for you as a family, as a second family or the first one, I don't know, it happens differently. Uh, you like the project you are building, right? That it's perfect, but it might slow you down, and uh, definitely because uh, you work with the same established practices. Even you, if, if you set up them from the scratch, usually you don't have a lot of possibilities to change something. You definitely change. You uh, like set up something. You monitor and control, and then you change it. But anyway, it it might be not enough. If it's okay for you, you can stay on your project, but you just need to know that it might limit you. It might slow down your professional development. Plus, for uh, everything else, so as I say, um, like for these quotes, uh, your professional growth, it's your responsibility. So uh, first of all, uh, even if your manager doesn't push you, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't grow professionally. It's your responsibility uh, and is your interest actually, because a lot of projects, they have the end. If they uh, don't have the end, uh, just uh, they will have it some, someday in the future. So, but you maybe your career is not going to finish uh, earlier than this project will end, right? So your grow, your grow is uh, your responsibility. Underestimation of theoretical knowledge also can slow you uh, down, slow you down because you need to know theoretical basis in order to uh, make a, in order to turn this uh, knowledge into skills to to put them into practice. Inadequate evaluation of your own level of knowledge and skills. Again, like as, uh, as objectively as you can evaluate your knowledge and skills. Solely money-driven career direction change. It means that if you want to move to some career direction only because uh, these engineers are better paid in this historical moment, right? It's not, it doesn't work for forever. So it, it might not work better, really well, you know, because um, only if you have at least some interest in, in this direction, then it works. But if you don't have uh, any interest in this direction and it's only about money, you will never reach uh, like 
the, the big, uh, you will never reach the top. So yes, you might be like an average engineer and something, something, but you will never be uh, the best there. No, maybe it's not a goal to be the best, but at least uh, um, I think you won't be happy even. But happiness is the main goal of life, right? And please don't uh, set unrealistic goals. Uh, if you are junior and in six months, it's really doubtful that you are going to be a senior. Because even if you uh, learn everything by heart and you cheat, I don't know, your evaluator, your examinator, your uh, interviewer, like uh, telling everything, everything. But if you don't have understanding and practice, you won't be a senior in six months. It doesn't work like this. You need to, to make your mistakes. You need to have practice and you need to have a more broad practice, right? And uh, English level is important. It's easy. So... Just, just remember that English level, if you want to have a good job, if you want to have a good clients, uh, that's, uh, and if you are located not in the country where, who speaks another language and they are your clients, like for example, if you are in Germany, then sure, like uh, learn Germany, <laughs> learn German language, so, uh, and English as well, because English is really important. So what's next? And uh, I hope you can at least start to answer this question to yourself now. What's next? And now let's have a time to hear your ideas, questions, comments. Let's have uh, some discussion. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Jana. Uh, we don't have any questions in our chat yet. So uh, for everyone, please take some time to write comments or maybe unmute and uh, just ask, ask your question here directly to Jana. And maybe before we are waiting for some questions, like uh, I have one, like I was thinking about that. Like uh, Jana, do you have some information maybe from your experience? Uh, how often our software testers like moving to different, to another directions from software testing? I don't have numbers, actually. Yeah, uh, it's it's not something that uh, uh, that happens really often. But I personally know a lot of people who move to project management, business analysis, uh, who are moving between uh, our competences, like from quality control engineer to test automation engineer, and actually vice versa as well. And from project management to uh, quality control engineers as well. No usually to lead levels or something but yeah so i don't have numbers but it happens it happens regularly um, and uh, people just try themselves uh, in different direction and how my uh, one friend said you know that uh, modern world give you possibility to live many lives so if you want to be now a software tester, you can do it for and for another 10 years or something, but then you can switch and live another life as a project manager, for example. And then you can back, go, go back if you see that it's not for you, because it might be not for you. And I personally, I asked myself this question uh, numerous times. So am I going to move to project management or business analysis? And every time I like, okay, maybe I should, maybe I have to. What is more important that I felt like I have to, because so who I'm going to be if I will be just a software tester, right? But no, I didn't have to, it appears. So it was just a like pressure of another roles. Yeah, we have too many directions. <clears throat> and as your last slide was, what's next? Like, like ask ourselves all the time, and what's next? And what's next now? What's next? Yes. So yeah, I see the comment that uh, expert level is only the software thing. Yeah, we have expert level, but some companies have another names and another structure of the competences. Uh, somewhere you have, uh, you can be principal lead and junior lead and something like this. So they have different names and different directions and it depends on the need of the company. So we are a huge company, right? So at least for our market, but some companies are small and then they 
definitely don't need they have maybe one director of quality or something like this and then they have only some leaders or even one leader and uh, some engineers and not even um, all the time they have seniors or something they might be only a software tester or quality analyst and then you might grow into a leader or not grow you can stay yeah, and there are already like one more question. How do you think what is the way for other companies? But probably you already answered that question. <laughs> yeah, I hope because it really depends on the needs. Because yeah, so we see our people growing and they are overgrowing the lead level. Then, uh, as I know from the history, because I uh, came to quality management office after expert level was introduced. So as I know from the history, we we had people who overgrown the lead level. So we uh, and we had a need maybe in some uh, delivery. We had needs for experts. We had needs to people who play roles of test manager, for example. It's much bigger than just a test lead. So we have a position for them. And if we will have something more, we'll create maybe a position for this, this other roles. So it's not something um, stable and not something that we cannot change. We can change it if uh, market change, if uh, needs change, we can do it. Yeah, we have several more questions. Uh -huh. uh, like first uh, answer that you will receive the recording of this meeting. Yeah, uh, in it will be a link in your follow-up follow email. Um, how many do you see expert level in the company? You see about 10, 9, 10. Yes, it, it's always about 10. <laughs> So yeah, not many. And yeah. we have in general 1,500 QC, more or less. And uh, yeah, and only 10 of them on an expert level. Yeah, it's not the easiest uh, level. Yeah, we have one more uh, interesting question. Uh, you both work in SoftServe for 10 plus years. Did it slow your development? No, here's the trick. <laughs> where you work for, for such company as a software for, who has a lot of different projects you can uh, you can grow inside the company that's why i stayed here for such a long time because i was able to uh, change projects i had uh, more than 10 projects inside of software so it uh, shouldn't slow your growth if you change the project Definitely, it's not a, like uh, something like, okay, Jana said we need to change uh, our project, bye, and then the next day, managers comes to me and like, hello, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I didn't say that you have to change it right now, but uh, it's something that might slow you. Yeah, uh, thank you. And we have one more, but we actually running out of time. Maybe we can share this answer like uh, separately or like what do you think, you know? Because here we have like so many questions, like could you please briefly share your career path and so on, soft mm -hmm. hard skills? But actually two, uh, only two questions, if it's okay, I can uh, like answer them in two minutes. Okay. <laughs> So if you can stay on the call, yeah, we can uh, have it. So uh, career path, uh, soft skill or hard skills. I definitely choose more soft skill part, but with the with no uh, like, but I take care of hard skills as well, right? Uh, I started as a tester in another company, and then I came to soft surf as a junior. And uh, here I grow from a junior to now a competence manager in the quality management office. So I didn't, uh, I, yeah, I, I was a QC lead, but I uh, haven't taken the position of QC expert because I took it already in a QM office. And um, I work on so soft skills more maybe because it, for me it's more interesting and uh, um yeah but for hard skills if i in projects if i need it i usually like get this knowledge as well and uh, work on it and uh, i had no problems working with uh, i don't know databases and i don't think it's even super hard hard skill you know or with api or, or everything but um i took courses on uh, java for example to to, to know how to read the code and uh, I get courses on uh, 
test automation. That's how I decided that I don't want to be a test automation engineer because uh, for me, it works like this. I should try and then decide it. No, no, it's not for me. I don't like it. So I know about test automation, where to apply it, but I don't write code and I don't want to write code. It's, it's uh, like a matter of taste. And starting point for test automation. Uh, oh, the language will be uh, uh, as a basis. It's better to see some statistical data because uh, now uh, different languages become popular. From what I heard, when our test automation part of the team uh, discussed, that it's still Java that is most popular, actually, so among test uh, automation guys. So Java now still beats everything, as I heard. So uh, it's better, I think, to see um, what is what do you like more, and uh, maybe to talk to some test uh, experienced test automation um, specialist to select, to choose your direction. Maybe something will be more interesting for you than other. Maybe you will love Python more than Java because they are different, right? So it's up to you. Yeah, thank you, Yana, for your answers and like we are really running out of time and we like answered all the questions but before we ramp up uh, i'd like to say that tomorrow morning we will have another session uh in, in terms of uh, km week so uh, it would be an interview and topic would be what does it mean to test a blockchain so uh, start time is 10 a.m ukrainian time and pavlo fatula uh, and alexander romanov will talk about that so I, I hope to, to see everyone uh, tomorrow there also. And um, that's it for our evening session. Thanks a lot, Jana. Thanks for all your statements or all the presentation. I believe that everyone enjoyed it. And have a nice evening and stay safe.